Uh, I'm Andy DeBillis for NETV in Brussels. Uh, with me today uh, is the CEO of Tata Consultancy, Mr. Subramanian Ramadora. Am I saying that correct? Correct. And the Indian ambassador to Belgium in, uh, in the European Union, Jay Bhagwati. That's right. Um, these uh, two gentlemen were explaining about India's prospects. Most of um, the attention has been paid to China in recent years. But first, um, Mr. Uh, ambassador, you're an economist by training as well, too. Um, you mentioned India is a democracy, shared values with the European Union. Do you think that gives you an advantage in the long run over um, a major country like China or, or the other BRIC countries, Brazil and Russia? Well, let me uh, say that, you know, uh, comparisons are always difficult to make. I would personally like to compare India with India uh, in the sense that uh, we have uh, progressed a lot and we have a long way to go. When you talked about democracy, uh, these are values which were instilled both into the people and into the letter of the law in terms of the Constitution by our founding fathers. Uh, the comparison with the other BRIC countries, you know how it is. Uh, it, every country develops in its own way depending upon its own political and other circumstances. So well, we'd like mm -hmm. to. Well, you mentioned also, for example, you're expecting growth of about 7%, down from 99%, uh, a number that makes most people's heads swim. Uh, that's still, in, it must be the envy of other countries that you can maintain that as a services-based uh, industry, uh, sector. Uh, no, I, uh, the uh, growth rates in the years prior to the current and earlier year was 9.5 percent, not 99 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, 99 percent. That, that, that's, that's only done in Russia, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, in in the in the last fiscal year now done 6.7 percent and. Current projections by private sector banks, I want to emphasize this because, you know, government projections are always uh, viewed with some suspicion by people, but private sector banks uh, like the Citibank, which is an international bank, or the ICICI, which is a private sector bank mm -hmm. in India, for the forthcoming year, that is April 1, 2009, to 31st of March 2009. 10, they are projecting about a 7.8 percent rate of growth. And you are right that this compares very favorably to many other countries. But as I had mentioned in my uh, remarks, uh, there are certain reasons why we have been able to uh, remain insulated from the economic slowdown in other parts. Well, I'm guessing Mr. Ramadori's country, uh, company is one of them. Um, I was looking at um, some of the information in your company. You get clearly 80% uh, of your revenues from outside India. How did you manage to export that kind of talent uh, and attract the attention of companies from the United States and the European Union? Well, see, the industry which we have built is over the uh, last 40 years. And then uh, the knowledge capital and the knowledge intensity which goes into the technology business is what we had going. Second, the domestic market in India was non-existent, so we had to look outside when we started in the early 68. Having said that, the West was willing to adopt it because some of us had studied in the US, some of us had a lot of relationships. We are also membership, mm -hmm. we're members of the IEEE. So with that connections, we built inch by inch, but we also brought in a lot of technology from the United States to India. Whether it was the Burroughs computers, the IBM computers, the Hewlett Packard, every one of them, the digital, which doesn't exist today. All of these were a technology transfer where we learned our capabilities and related to the Western market. The whole thing in this is how do we are going to be staying ahead of the game? How we are going to be investing for the future, whether it's in people, whether it's in technologies, and that's the model we have practiced right through. It sounds like you clearly have a strategy for staying ahead of other people because you talked about taking bold steps while other people are hiding under their desks. How do you persuade your clients to participate in that? Because clearly they must have been cutting back in their expenditures as well, too. You have six of the top 10 Forbes, uh, uh, 549 of the top 100. I think some of the customers are absolutely ahead of the curve. They know their survival depends upon investing for the future, and those are the clients which we go and work with. They enable us to perform to their uh, vision, to their strategy, and through technology and through a collaborative model, we relate to them, and that's what takes them to places along with us. It's a win-win situation rather than how do I get the lowest cost, cut everything, and then uh, suffer in the process. Mr. Ambassador, do you share that enthusiasm? Um, do you see companies like uh, like Tata, TCS, Suze Lawn, uh, Mittal Steel, some of the real burgeoning powers of that part of the world having an influence on in how the European Union sees business models? 
let me just say, I have a friend called Paras Chaudhary who heads a tire company. And he told me once, in uh, only half in joke, that he won't employ his son in his own company. Why? Uh, uh, precisely, <laughs> your immediate. He says he doesn't have enough fire in the belly. Things have been very uh, easy for him because I have succeeded in my job. So I think there are a lot of people in India with a lot of fire in their bellies because uh, they want to achieve. They are coming from a developing country. They have uh, the education or have uh, the urge to increase their qualifications and then after that compete in an open manner both within the country and without. So therefore, when you uh, point to the Tata companies, uh, I mean all the Tata companies are known all over India for uh, how transparent they are and I think I can say this to his face that compared to some of the other companies, um, Satyam, you know that whole episode, but they have now got out of that problem. So the Tata group of companies are known for their idealism, their enthusiasm, and similarly, there are other groups of companies. So it comes from this basic desire within India. Uh, we are a young society to, I think you understand that expression, move ahead because of that fire in their belly. Uh, that I do, and, one, and finally, uh, do you both think that India's uh, skilled and literate uh, base of uh, workers can help. You mentioned about imp improving literacy among females as well, too. Does that give you an advantage over, uh, over other countries, too? Well, uh, you see, we are uh, behind many developing countries in terms of our literacy levels, in terms of our infant mortality levels, in terms of our general sanitation levels. Uh, and you can look at the glass. It's half full, it's half empty. I tend to look at the glass as half full rather than half empty. And you're absolutely right. The, uh, primary education is an extreme extremely, extremely important part of our development process. Uh, sometimes we forget that the basics are very important, so uh, I do think as we progress on the building blocks, you are going to see uh, quite a few interesting changes uh, well, as India develops. And finally, Mr. Ramador apparently sees the glass as full and sees the glass. Some countries and companies uh, look at a glass uh, half full and they don't even see the glass. Uh, what gives you this, this optimism that this is going to, to burst and that India can be a part of that? One is the uh, passion and the uh, age profile and the demographics which we have is extremely uh, beneficial. A country which is growing at 6.7% uh, today and accelerating to 78 or beyond, you can see the dynamism if you visit there and what people want to achieve. So long as we give the opportunities through corporations, through funding, through whatever mechanisms, there's a lot that can be done and they will do a lot. Well, don't stop until you get to 99%. That's, that's even better. <laughs> you know, there's an old saying that fortune is not on the side of the faint-hearted, and these gentlemen believe that too, especially for India. I'm Andy DeBillis with NETV in Brussels.